Today, we're gonna to dive into how to create the mindset of a network marketing champion. Now, before I was a coach and trainer, I had actually become the number one income earner of a network marketing company, and I got to work with so many amazing individuals. I know exactly what it takes to create this mindset. Let me show you. First, I'm gonna share with you the two words that really helped me. And I wanna point out, I didn't start from some fancy position or some you know great brand. I started when I was dead broke. Next, I'm gonna share with you why network marketing is kind of like football, like what that analogy, what I mean by that and how that may actually help you with your mindset. And lastly, we're gonna get deep with why you aren't consistent. I've done a lot of coaching around this and I know the reasons, let me show you. So what are these two words that really helped me when I started? And again, I started after losing it all in the real estate market. When the market crashed in 2008, 2009, I got completely wiped out. So I got serious about network marketing from a place of being in foreclosure, having gone through a divorce, being deep in debt, and being very depressed for probably a year. I was just so depressed and beating myself up. I, I didn't start from some amazing, amazing position. I started when I was really down. And the two words that really helped me were the words until and despite. I made a decision that I was going to learn and do everything that I could until I created success in network marketing. And I was gonna do it despite my, you know, abundance of obstacles and lack of support. Because no one around me was like, yeah, this is a good idea. Like most people around me thought it was a terrible idea. They're like, well, you know, shouldn't you go get a job? And the reality was people weren't hiring. Most people here, you know, in the state of Florida, they were affected by the real estate market crash. So no one was hiring, my credit was shot from going into foreclosure, couldn't get a loan. I really didn't know what I was going to do, but I made a decision that I was gonna show up, I was gonna learn, and I was gonna do until I created success, and I was gonna do it despite all the obstacles that I was encountering. All the obstacles of my mindset obstacles, of my past obstacles, you know, I didn't grow up in the most ideal of, of situations, I grew up in a very abusive home, and you know, being dead broke, coming from an abusive home. There were a lot of things that were, a lot of programs that were kicking in my head and, uh, and, and they were tough to overcome, they were. And so adopting that until and despite mindset is something that if you're in a tough spot, you're gonna need to adopt that. You're gonna need to stop being addicted to how quickly you create success and instead make the commitment that you're going to do it regardless of how long it takes. So why do I say network marketing is kind of like football? Well, how you begin, I see a very close analogy to football. So there are some people that they join network marketing and you know a phrase that I heard from Eric Worre, a good friend of mine, he says, you're either punished or rewarded for the life you led before network marketing. So if you've been someone that was always working on yourself and getting around bigger and better circles and you know really making a difference, providing value to the marketplace, then you'll probably be rewarded, right? You'll probably reach out to people and, and get a lot of fast yeses and things like that. If you haven't been that type of person, then your, your story may be a little different. And so I liken it to football. Some people, they get started in network marketing and they're on like the one yard line and it takes this much effort to touch down, right? So you see people that they enter this network marketing company and it's like they joined on Tuesday and then on Thursday they hit a big rank and you're like, what the heck? I've been here for years and I haven't done that. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with their journey before they joined. And that's something very important. You know, a lot of times an influencer will join a network marketing company and get a whole bunch of sales. Well. That doesn't mean that they have a, a superior process. It means they were an influencer. And you need to know the difference. You need to know the difference between what is a solid process versus what is just something that happened because of who they are. And so some people, internet work marketing, they're on the one yard line, little, little, you know, little bit of effort, touchdown. Some people are at the 50 yard line and they have to work. They gotta, they gotta toil, they gotta, you know, do some reps, they gotta, you know, learn some skills, they gotta meet new people, and then and then they can score that touchdown. Some people can't even see the stadium, right? They got binoculars and, you know, they're, they are 
they so haven't worked on themselves, they so haven't surrounded themselves with other like-minded people that also want success that they're miles away. And I'll, and I'll even share with you one major example here. So one of our students, Amy, she had been in network marketing for 17 years and had never made more than she spent. Imagine Amy's husband, right? He even made her pinky swear that she would never do one of these things again. 17 years she's been trying to build a business and 17 years in a row she has lost money. She spent more money than she, than she made. 17 years. Amy stumbles across some of our social media training, starts to implement, and now, fast forward a few years, she's a million dollar earner. She retired her husband. And so this is a great example of someone who was very far away from the stadium. They couldn't, couldn't see the goal line, but kept showing up, kept doing the work, maybe embraced the idea until and despite, and became a million dollar earner. Do you think she cares about the 17 years it took? No, she's a million dollar earner, she does what she wants. And so know that even though you may not be experiencing fast success, don't make that a prerequisite. And that doesn't mean that you can't create success. I've seen a lot of people that you know didn't create fast success, but kept showing up and created success anyway. So before I get to my last point, which is just so important for you to hear, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You know, a lot of the social media training that my friend Amy came across is in this channel and we're constantly updating and rolling out new content as well. So subscribe and hit that bell so that you're notified as we roll out new content. Now my last point, why aren't you consistent? And this is a, this is a very deep thing here, and I've learned this. So I am a very consistent guy. And looking back, I realized that my issues from my childhood of my self-worth created a coping mechanism of work, of being a workaholic. So for the majority of my, my life, I have been a workaholic. And that's something that uh, over the years I've, I've I've figured out and uh, so I'm, I'm no longer a workaholic, but every day I do progress toward my purpose, every single day. So although every day isn't a high production day, there's zero days that are of no production. And so over the years I've been asked to, you know, share, you know, how to be more consistent or what's my daily routine. And I would share this stuff and say, this is what I do and this is how I do it and this is why, but very few people would do it. And, and I, I'd be left scratching my head wondering, well, well, why aren't they doing it? I'm telling them what to do, why aren't they doing it? The reason that you're not consistent is because you're drawing the wrong conclusion to success. And the reason that I know this is that I've coached hundreds of people around this exact topic. So let me give you an example. I'll, I'll give you several. So we have a book called Time, Money, Freedom, and it's published by Hay House, and it's a best-selling book. And Every once in a while, we'll do a special where we'll sneak in what we call golden tickets into that book. If you get a golden ticket, you get a 10 minute one-on-one -on -one call with me. And so this lady, she got one of the tickets. And so I get on the phone with her, 10 minute call. And she tells me, you know, for the last, you know, four and a half years, I've been up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I'll have a great month. In the next few months, I'll fall off and then I'll have a great month. Right. And so that was her pattern. And one of the keys to understanding what your programming is, is to learn those patterns. What's your pattern? Some people, they leave a company and they join a new one. Some people, they change careers. You know, there's different reasons. And so she said the word disappointment. And I just figured I'd, you know, get to the point fast because we only got 10 minutes. And I said, well, who disappointed you as a kid? Because if you're focused on not being a disappointment, it's often because one of your parents was a disappointment to you. And so she says, well, uh, you know, maybe not a disappointment, but maybe shame. Well, it turns out that her mom had been a prostitute. And at that point, I have an idea of maybe what her problem is, but I'm not sure uh, exactly, but I so I asked this question. I said, "Do a lot of people know that? Like, do your you know local people and friends and family members do they know that?" And they're like, "Oh," she said, "Oh yeah, they all know it." And she's still alive now. She's just given me the answer to her problem, but she doesn't even know it yet. And so I said, "I, kn I know what your problem is." She's like, "What's my problem?" I said, "Well, you believe that if you hit a certain level in success, that it's going to create jealousy and envy amongst the people that know you, and they will start bringing up the fact 
that, yeah, but your mom was a prostitute, which would bring shame to your living mother, and you would do anything to prevent that. She's like, oh, my God. And she starts crying. She's like, you know, having a breakdown. And she's like, oh, my God, I've never, that makes so much sense, but I've, I've never thought of it that way. And, and I said, but there's another way to look at it. Because there's always another way to look at it. Right? You can't change the, the past. You can't change the facts. But you can look at them differently. And so I said, there's another way to look at it. And that is that your mom literally did everything she could to help you have a better life than she did. And for that to be the reason that you don't succeed, it's kind of a slap in the face. Tough. Tough stuff. I text her a couple days later because I'm, I'm a little worried. I'm like, maybe I went too hard too fast. And, and so I text her and I said, hey, how are you doing? And she said, I had a conversation with my mom and it's on. Cool, right? Like I don't, you know, some people, sometimes people say that and they don't do anything and, you know, we'll see, right? Well, as of about a month ago, I saw her post and she tagged me that she just had her biggest month of her entire career. She's rocking and rolling. Her, her business is on fire. And it's all because of that identification of why she wasn't being consistent. Now, I've seen people not be consistent because they watched their parents make a bunch of money and lose it. And they were ridiculed for you know losing money. And they just never want to be ridiculed. So the only way to not lose a bunch of money is not to make a bunch of money. I've seen people that their parents were successful, but they ignored them as a kid. And they're drawing the conclusion that success means, yeah, you'll have success, but you're not going to have a good relationship with your kids. So they sabotage it and they just won't create success. Know that you can do anything that you want when you're successful, right? It doesn't have to mean what it meant back then. You know, there is no guarantee that if you make a bunch that you won't lose it, but you don't have to wear that as a life sentence, that it's, it's, it's going to happen no matter what you do, right? And you don't have to draw the conclusion that with massive success, you can't have a good relationship with your kids. And so the reason you're not consistent is because you're drawing the wrong conclusion based on past observations you made as a kid. Identifying those spots will help you move past. So if you need help getting to the bottom of your different issues around consistency or how you think about success, I mentioned it before, but you may consider getting our book, Time, Money, Freedom. Now, this book is published by Hay House. It's available on Amazon. We'll actually put a link down in the description, but it will help you identify some of the different root causes of not being consistent or thinking incorrectly about success. Specifically, chapter number two, I dive very deep on some of the programs that I discovered around me that was preventing me from having great relationships. And so I highly encourage you to get it. The link's in the description and appreciate it.